So the next stage is actually formatting your text that you've put into your new page. So just to introduce the formatting bar first of all, just on above your body text area where you would have put in your content for the page, you have a number of different styling options up on the bar here, so it's very similar to Microsoft Word. Um, you have uh, similar buttons like bold, italic, strike through, the bullet lists, underline, and you also have the paragraph styling uh, drop down menu, just like you do in Microsoft Word. And just to let you know, there's also some advanced options here as well. So under the blue Woo button, you'll see there are a number of different options in here that have actually been programmed specifically by Woo Themes to go with your template, which will look a lot nicer than a lot of the generic styling options that you can see on the toolbar there. So in this video, we're going to go through some of the very uh, simple styling options that you will use on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so first of all, let's start with bold. If you want to make any of your text bold, you need to simply highlight your text and then click on the B button for bold. And now uh, for italics, same thing, highlighting some text and then clicking on the I button. And finally, strike through. So strike through will give you the effect of um, looking like someone's actually put a line through the text. So strike through is the button next to the eye, which has um, a few letters with a line through. And there we have it. So we've got bold, italic, and strike through done. Now the next ones along are the list buttons. So bullet points and uh, number lists. I wouldn't actually recommend using those generic options because you've got one that's been programmed specifically by Woo Themes that's going to look a lot better with your template. Now finally, let's go on to the paragraph markings. Uh, so you have a drop down menu here which has the paragraphs and it has heading 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now sometimes this uh, field here won't actually show by default. So sometimes when you open up a new page it may actually look like this. You've only got one row of buttons here and to expose the second row you simply need to click the show hide kitchen sink button which looks like a collection of little coloured buttons right there and that gives you your second row of options. Okay so let's just say you want to add a uh, heading, a subheading to your text. So if you highlight your heading and if you apply heading 1 that is actually going to change the uh, formatting on the, those words to be whatever you have said you want heading one to be. So there is central programming within your theme that will apply a certain um, formatting to heading one text. So whatever colors and fonts and uh, the size of fonts that you've chosen centrally, that will be applied to that once you publish this to the website. So you really don't see a lot here, but don't worry about that for now. And then again, if you've got a subheading that needs to go under heading 1, you can give it the styling of heading 2. So that's going to show it that it's linked to heading 1, but it's not a new heading. It's actually one that's within heading 1. And it's the same with heading 3. Now, just a little tip here for you. Search engines give more weight to whatever text you have in headings 1, 2, and 3. Um, also headings 4, 5, 6, so obviously the, uh, the importance goes from heading 1 being the most important to heading 6 being the least important. So basically what that means is that when Google indexes your uh, web page overnight, it's going to give quite a lot of weight to whatever words you put into heading 1 and heading 2 and heading 3. So if you're basing your website around a certain set of keywords that you want Google to find you for and to make sure that you get higher up on Google search, make sure you put those words into heading one, heading two, and heading three, just to tell Google that these are the most important um, words on your website. Okay, so let's just take a look at that from the browser point of view, or um, in other words, what the uh, reader will see when they look at your website. I'm going to save this page as a draft, just up here using the save draft function or button. And then up the very top of the page you will see there is a button for view page. And that's going to show me what the page actually looks like from a reader's point of view. There we go. So as you can see we've got the bold, 
we've got the italics, we've got the strike through here, this is heading one, this is heading two, and this is heading three. And there you have it, there is the common formatting functions that you will use within your website.